But uh, we're going to let Miss Dorothy get started. And so take it away, Miss Dorothy. Okay. Actually, um, grocery shopping really begins at home. Um, grocery shopping may never be a fun adventure for some, but it is a necessity. I think that we all will agree to that. But there are some things that we can do to make it a little bit easier. Uh, one of the things uh, is that it really begins at home and actually it really begins in our kitchen area. Uh, start by keeping a pad handy or uh, even you can use your phone. Uh, there are several apps there that you can keep a list of the items that uh, you're getting low on and you can make sure that you have the list available to look at each time that uh, you need to remember what you need to replenish. That's one of the ways to get started. Uh, then uh, check the um, grocery ads to see which stores have the best buys. And it does help sometimes to have planned menu for the week so you can be sure to have all of those necessary ingredients on, on hand. So the next step would be to check your pantry for items that are on hand. And that's called the on-hand pantry shuffle. Many of us, I am sure, have, have uh, been in that pantry shuffle, moving this can around, the package around, and so forth, and making an inventory list of really what we have on hand so that we can plan our menus around those items that are on hand, and then also plan around uh, specials and sometimes even seasonal foods. Uh, if you use uh, paper coupons, uh, clip them to the list. Uh, or arrange them on your phone. Uh, there is an app where you can arrange uh, your different grocery uh, coupons so they're right at hand once you uh, get into the uh, mode of checking out. Uh, it is really very helpful to have a list that's organized, a list that's organized according to the layout of the store, and that uh, avoids backtracking for missed items, uh, and being prepared also saves time but only the items that you on your have on your list are those items that you should purchase. Uh, a lot of times, you know, we're kind of in that mode where we want to purchase all types of things we see and sticking to our list is one way that we can save money, save time and be prepared. Okay, and I'm gonna add a little something to that um, just from uh, something personal that happened to me last week. If you have apps and coupons, don't forget to use them um, because I went somewhere and I have this app on my phone and I could have, I, I, you know, you get so many points or whatever for, for free food um, when you use it. And I left and I was like, woohoo, look at how much I just spent. And I completely forgot to use the app. So anyway, lived and learned. I won't do that again, but yeah, don't, don't forget to use those. Um, apps are quick and easy to, to be able to keep up with those food items that you, you do have those sense off coupons and they do add up. Sometimes you can even stack them uh, for better savings. All right. So um, shopping then continues when we get to the store. So I think a lot of us have heard this before, but by golly, don't go to the store hungry because so many things end up in your cart uh, that generally speaking are not like, oh boy, those celery sticks sure do look good. I'm going to put those in there. A lot of times it's things that um, make your wallet thinner and your waistline fatter. So um, uh, those are, those are some, some good things you can do to avoid that if, if, uh, if at all possible, maybe you keep a little bag of peanuts or whole grain crackers or something in your car um, or in the uh, baby bag or something like that. So having something so that you're not just so hungry when you get there makes it a lot easier to make good healthy choices. Um, and then there's also using my plate and my plate has all five of the food groups. And if you can think about shopping healthy from all five food groups, that's really a, a great way to shop healthy. Um, so fruits and vegetables have so many good nutrients. They come fresh and canned and frozen and dried and in juices and all of the different ways that we can get those provide us with lots of nutrients and fiber, um, water that our body needs. Uh, about half of 
what we eat throughout the day, half of our, our plate should be fruits and vegetables. And that's a, a really good way to, to be able to go. If you are getting things that are canned, watch out for the salt in the vegetables and the, and the extra sugar that's in the fruits, because sometimes those are just unnecessary, but they're in there. Um, and if you don't want those there, a lot of times you can put them, uh, dump out your fruit or your vegetables in a colander and run them under some water. And that'll take about half of the salt or the, the extra sugar off of those. Um, also in our um, grains, we want about half of all of the grain foods that we eat to be whole grains in a day. So the cereals and the, the pasta and the breads, try getting those whole grains. It means you're getting the whole part of the plant that's edible with all the good nutrients um, without a lot of it uh, missing from things like white bread and white crackers and those sorts of things that a lot of times are missing on some of those really good nutrients, the extra fiber and, and those kinds of things, disease fighting things that are there. So we wanna to try to get some more of those things be whole grains. And by the way, if you wanna know if it's a whole grain or not, if you look at the ingredients, the first ingredient word should be whole, W-H-O-L-E, whole wheat, whole barley, whole oats, something like that. Um, so that's really good. In the protein, we wanna to try to go with leaner proteins and proteins can come from animals, they can come from plants. So there's um, nuts and seeds and beans, uh, tofu, those sorts of things. Then there's also from, again, from animals, the big three probably are chicken and beef and pork, but there's also lots of seafood in that as well. So leaner uh, is, is really good. And then dairy, again, also the lower or no fat versions of those good uh, amounts of calcium for good strong bones and teeth. So a good variety of all those foods is a really good way to be able to go and, uh, and, and get, get what you need. And we've got a link for my plate, which has lots of good suggestions, ways to shop, ways to get the things you need to get all of those, all of those food groups. And then this is one of my favorite things to talk about. I will try to limit myself. But the nutrition facts are your friends, okay? You get to make very personalized best choices just for you, all right? You can compare a couple of different items that might taste basically be the, the same or, 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 or have the same quality, um, but you can pick the one that's better for you. So um, there's something called a 20%, 50%, or excuse me, 20% or 5% rule. 20% or more of a serving of that food. Um, it's 20% it's or more of the nutrients that you need in a day. Okay, that's considered high. If it's 5% or less, that's considered low. And that can be good or bad depending on the nutrient in you. So if, for example, you want to get more calcium, if a food has more than 20%, that's a good source of calcium. If it has less than 5%, that's a low source of calcium. If you are talking about sodium and you really wanna watch your sodium and you have one food that's got more than 20% of sodium in a serving and another food that's very similar and it's got only you know six or 7%, maybe if you're really watching your sodium, you wanna go with the one with only six or 7% because that's lower. All right, not so high in uh, that food. And so again, you can personalize it for you. And what's important to you may not be quite the same thing that's important to me and, and my family. But, but read those nutrition facts labels and you'll get a lot of really good information there. And the last one says shop alone. And that's not always, but very, very often, if you have children with you, if you have spouses or significant others, they may have different buying habits than you do and you have thought all kinds of healthy thoughts and you have budgeted and you have planned and they ruin all of that by just throwing all this extra stuff into your cart that you had not planned on. So um, sometimes it can be much more helpful if you, if you are able to go by yourself. I have heard one or two people who have said that the other person actually makes it a lot faster because they divide and conquer. You go get this half of the list, I'll go get the other half, and that works. But that doesn't always work for everybody. So um, keep that in mind. All right, so then we've got some dollars and cents to talk about at the store. One of the good things to do a lot of times is to compare brands. Quite often, the national brand will be more expensive than a store brand. 
Uh, sometimes there are quality differences or taste differences. And if you're very, very loyal to a certain brand, that's fine. But if basically they're about the same for you, a lot of times it's going to be less expensive for you to go for that store brand. And then buying in season can be a really great thing to do. Food tastes so much better and is often so much less expensive when you buy produce in season. And in season is different depending on where you live. But in the panhandle of Florida where we are, I know it's much different than in Miami, which is different from you know, what it might be in, in Arkansas. So we've got a link there for uh, produce and when it's in, in season in the panhandle of Florida. So that's a, a good place that you could go to. Being flexible can be a really great thing. If you had something in mind, but you get to the store and you find out, oh, there's a, a, a sale, you know, I was gonna have chicken, but this seafood is on a really good price and it's on sale and that would be a great substitution fine, I'll, I, I can substitute that or the same thing you know, with, a, with a vegetable, something like that. So being flexible can be a very helpful thing to do. And then looking at those unit prices, those are available in most stores. Um, and what you can do if you're, if you're able to, to see the, the picture that we have there, we're gonna assume that both of these yogurts are basically about the same, about the same quality, about the same taste, one of them is a six ounce container, the one at the bottom, and then the one at the top is a 32 ounce container. All right, so which one is the better buy? Well, for every ounce of yogurt it takes to fill up that bottom package, it costs 12 cents for every one of those ounces of yogurt. It only costs five cents for every ounce of the basically same tasting yogurt to fill up the container at the top. So that 32 ounce container is only five cents an ounce as opposed to 12 cents an ounce. It's a more economical buy. The only thing to keep in mind is if you're only gonna eat the six ounce container and the rest of it's gonna go bad, well then that's not a better buy. So that's something to keep in mind and, and think about. If you don't have a unit price listed somewhere, they're usually in very small letters below the, uh, the food that you're looking at, the package of, of food. You can take the whole price, the, the whole price, and divide it by the whole amount of weight, the number of ounces, grams, pounds, or even servings. And that will give you the cost per serving, the cost per gram, the cost per pound, and you could compare two different things. Most people have calculators on their phones, so that's something you can do. Or if you're just really good at math and like to do that, then by all means, have a ball with that. Um, compare those, those unit prices, that'll help out a lot. And then also, um, which makes sense for something maybe like ice cream, but maybe not with other things, but get those non-perishables first, then get your perishable items last. Uh, you know that if your ice cream is melting and sticking all over everything, then that's not so good, but you, you wanna make sure that your milk's not sitting there the whole time that you're shopping. And, okay, so we've got a little, a little, um, special thing to look at here. And I know that this might be a little bit harder for some of us in this time right now where we're stuck at home so much, but there is a huge uh, difference that can happen between whether we're gonna order something in or whether we're gonna be able to go to the grocery store ourselves and get what we need. So big change there, again, for convenience and, and cost. If you were to get a chicken dinner for four, you got chicken, two sides and a biscuit, and I've done this, and actually when I did it, it was about $50, but that's because it was a drink too. Um, and then if you, 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 you've got to include the cost of the food, the delivery charge. I live in an area where the delivery charges are very high because even though there's three or four different places that will do those deliveries, they're, they're just not as abundant. There's, they're, we're, we live out a little bit further. So the delivery charge is higher. And then you want to give the person a tip so that's more money. That same meal prepared at home, not entirely from scratch. Those biscuits I looked at were frozen, okay, to, to figure this out. But, but it's almost a fourth the price. So every once in a while, if you wanna treat somebody to something, this can be fine. But to do this over and over again, that gets really expensive. So for this particular example, winner, winner, homemade chicken dinner, okay. Um, <laughs> Miss Dorothy. Hi. 
being a savvy shopper uh, ends at home. Uh, storing foods quickly, storing them properly, and storing them safely is very important. Um, make the grocery store your last stop uh, if you're doing other errands along the way. Uh, once home, frozen and refrigerated items should be brought in and put in the refrigerator or the freezer first because perishable foods do spoil quickly. Uh, and to prevent them from spoilage, you might want to invest in something called a reusable insulated shopping bag. A reusable insulated shopping bag will assure food stays at safe temperature temporarily for a short period of time, and especially here along the Gulf Coast during the summertime when it is very, very warm, can be way over 100 degrees inside our car, uh, it does help keep those perishable food items cold until you can return home and put them in your refrigerator or into your freezer. Uh, storing properly uh, food can help assure that it, it does keep its quality and also its shelf life. So once you are home and you are starting to put your foods uh, into the refrigerator, those that are perishable, uh, there's some tips that will help you keep foods fresh. One is condiments like uh, mustard, uh, ketchup, and so forth should be stored uh, in the door shelves. Uh, store those dairy products uh, and ready to eat foods on a higher shelf where it's a little bit colder. Uh, store raw meat and meat products on that lower shelf, and that helps to prevent what we call cross-contamination of other food items in your refrigerator. And non-perishable food items can be stored at room temperature, uh, preferably in a very cool, dry, dark place. For example, your pantry or your cabinet would be a safe place to store those. Uh, safe uh, store them safely, it's important to maintain those temperatures. Uh, the refrigerator foods should be at 40 degrees Fahrenheit or below. Those in your freezer, those frozen, frozen foods in your freezer, zero degrees Fahrenheit um, for those. And room temperature and those non-perishable food items like canned food items, packaged food items, and so forth uh, that are at room temperature uh, that are definitely not perishable should be stored below 70 degrees to keep, to keep them from having those problems. Uh, we have a question for you. What is the most expensive food in your refrigerator? What do y'all think? What do you, yes, what do you think? Mm. All right, well, okay. I'll okay. tell you. <laughs> I'll put, I'll put meats, there, oh. Um, oh, there's some good comments are, coming in. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, good, good. Okay. Well, the most um, salmon. We got some salmon. We got meats. We have wine, seafood. Okay. Okay. Actually, food that is almost out of date. That's the most expensive one because that's the, the one you're going to be throwing away. That, 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 that's our it. answer. That's it. The most Throw expensive away. food. Yeah, the most expensive food in your refrigerator is is the food that you're going to throw away. That's like yeah. throwing money down the drain or in the trash can, okay? Right. So don't buy it and then throw it straight in the trash can because yes. that would just be a very sad waste. So and another, sure another comment was milk, which the prices are a little bit yeah. up on milk. I agree, it is expensive. So, so to, help, to avoid that spoiling, store it quickly, store it properly, and store it safely. Okay. Being a, uh, a supermarket uh, savvy shopper means that you are eating healthier, making those healthier choices, uh, and then saving time and saving money. And it does lead to a less stressful shopping experience. So yeah. if you have questions about budgeting, shopping, menu planning, or nutrition, contact your local county family and consumer science extension agent.